Hey, Tales from the Flipside family. I told you we were gonna have some guests and boy, do we have a treat for you today. Steve from Cyberspace Comics. Hey, How's man. it going, brother? Welcome to the warehouse, man. Thanks, man. Come on in, check this out, man. It's amazing. Before we get into business, I, I gotta know, what was your first comic? There's actually more than one. Okay. A stack, my dad had some books hidden in some closet, I guess. And, you know, just when your kid just yeah, you dig the around. house, sure. yeah, bored, like, <laughs> and there, he just had this whole stack of books, and I was like, those are interesting, what's up with that? And some were old, they yeah. had like a Fantastic Four Eight in there, Ooh. Uh, and some were new, like, not that I knew at the time, right. I had no idea how comics came Worked. into being, they just magically were in this closet. <laughs> Genie and, appeared. Yeah, but uh, I've actually brought a couple. This is one of the first ones. All right. Um, Avengers 303. So many cool characters on one cover. Cover. Fighting a giant. And uh, yeah, as a kid that seemed really cool. I oh, still think it's really absolutely. cool. Absolutely. Yeah, so many bright and colorful characters. I was like, what's that? Let me check this out. That one, and then this one was probably my favorite for the time. Oop, that's not it. This one. Okay, we got Thor, Thor four versus twelve. the Juggernaut. Versus the Juggernaut with the... With the New Warriors. New Warriors, yeah. yeah. And as a kid, that was cool too. You know, you got kid superheroes. That's, yeah, that was that was a big deal. So, I was hooked, and, and to be honest, these grabbed my attention more than Fantastic Four Eight. You know, right. collectors you know, would have a whole totally different perspective on that, but... That was no. That, if you were a reader back in the day, which I, I really figure feel, man, maybe 85, 95 percent of uh, people that are in the that are in the comic retail business in any form were readers first. I uh, would, or, or, so, yeah. or people who wanted to actually get into the industry, writers and and. I run into so many guys who are like, oh, I wanted to get my own comic, and they're artists or they were writers, and um, they just fall into the business because they love it. To that much. me, like, it just seems like, why would you do this business if you didn't love it? There's so much to know. <laughs> it's it's overwhelming sometimes. It, There's it, so many little nuances. It is. That's why it's so difficult to get new. It's a it's the, how you stumble across it the magical way. It's probably one of the best ways to have people come in because when they come into a comic store. It is completely overwhelming. Yeah, where do you start? Where, where do you start? Where? Well, actually, there's good places to start. Then I'll go into that too. Oh, awesome. So after that, I was totally enthralled with these. I was I read that one, four twelve, Thor four twelve, like nightly, I think. And um, so my dad's like, "Oh, this is cool. Let me bring it down to a comic shop downtown." And there was one uh, right by Never Sing Club. Was it Cam Cameron's Cameron's Comics? Yeah. 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 Cameron's yeah. comics. So. My my wife went to college with, with him. Oh yeah, George. Yeah, oh, George. Cool. Yeah. So we go in there and he's like, you know, pick out some books. Uh, he starts with the stuff he really liked, Fantastic Four, Thor, and then he's like, oh, there's a there's a number one. We should start that from the beginning. You're gonna make fun of me probably. No, this. I'm not, because I know what it is. Dark. This on. is it. This yeah. sketchy started on comic books right there. Absolutely. Dark and look, what it just it got hot there for a while. It's it's. Yeah. It's to, me, to me, it doesn't matter what it's worth. This is an awesome book. It, it seemed, just for my own personal. Did it seem like it was a Shadowhawk? Who was Shadow? At that point, who's Shadowhawk? Who Shadowhawk, right? But also Shadowhawk's image. This Shadowhawk came right. after this. That's what I mean. Yeah. Is that like, or don't you think Shadowhawk is a variant of Darkhawk? Possibly. Yeah. I don't know if I would say that, but it's it's possible. But the claws yeah. and then well, other Shadow, than the... Dark, Dark, yeah. yeah. But yeah, uh, yeah that's. Uh, that book. I think it was a really cool character. I was much older. I'm much older than him. So I was older, so like that didn't pique my interest. I was deep, deep into the indies at the time. Um, my first stuff was Sad Sack. Like okay. my buddies wouldn't let me borrow their good books until I had like read this garbage. <laughs> but it, I found it hysterical at the time. My family was all military, uh, had all been in the military. So 
like all that military humor and stuff I got, mm -hmm. and I, I found it really funny. So it, it kind of got me hooked. The art was really bad. It was like, I never really liked that art all growing up. Um, I, I liked the stuff that they were reading. Um, to me, th so the draw for me of comics was the ongoing story. Right. So books like Sad Sack or even Archie, they didn't have the, quite the appeal right because there wasn't that ongoing characterization you know, right building. it was all day in the life here's yeah, this one yeah. day it so begins it ends yeah if you read one archie book it didn't matter if you read them in order or not it's just right this is at the time you know they've added continuity since then but like back then it was very one and done and yeah the, without the uh the overarching arc plot um what's why do i come back every right month? yeah you know um i i I wish that like, it seems like some have done that, are still doing that and some aren't. It depends on the writer, it depends on the company. But uh, yeah, I mean, I think that's a big part of how you get people to come back every every mm -hmm. every month. Sure. So uh, what moved you in from being a collector mm -hmm. into a seller? Mm. Um, I was I, I was very much, in, I don't know if I was into collecting so much as I just wanted to read. read. I was, and specifically only Marvel. Uh, I was really just into the, the Marvel history. It, there's a lot, like there's so much history in DC and Marvel to try to learn about both at the same time would probably be you know, overwhelming. It, it is very overwhelming. Um, Usually you're one or the other. You're yeah, either a DC yeah. guy or a Marvel guy. Yeah. Now you may read across, mm -hmm. your favorite writer goes over, you know, you'll you read that, but like as far as history wise and who, you know. Yeah, and since DC doesn't really seem to care about continuity at anymore. all, Marvel is the clear. Now, clear winner, winner if you're yeah. into long, long history and, and, Absolutely. and decades of continuity. Yeah. Uh, so I, you know, Christmas gifts would be um, would, co would be comic books. So I was Ooh, delving into nice. the history of Marvel. So you were getting older books even so, as a youth. You were like, yeah, hey, I want to get yeah. something. Yeah. yeah. So this was one of my Christmas gifts one year. That's cool. Avengers number fifty. I, I was never that guy that would reach, but like I didn't. I always wanted whatever the new shiny toy was. When I was a kid, when I was getting gotcha. comic books, I was like, whatever's the newest on the rack. Uh -huh. If I did get a gift, it was like, they would buy me like just a bunch off of the rack. So no interest in back issues. I, when I got, when I became a teenager, but it was all like, I wanted to find the weirdest, like I'd be at the flea market digging through the boxes mm -hmm. and I'd be bypassing, you know, stuff for, to get the, you know, some swamp thing yeah. and some uh, weird war. Gotcha. You know, I was a big weird war fan. So uh, I, I love would, the art. I would end up reading all all that, and then when I run out of stuff to read, I would read the price guide. Oh wow! Which was looking back, I'm like, that's really was that wizard? Weird. No, 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 no. Like Overstreet. You're reading the Overstreet guide. Just, yeah, so car trips, I would just take the guide with me and and look through. I wanted to see what Marvel books were out there. That I didn't know about you know, right? I just had one comic store. So and then like, through you know, reading, they had back issue books, but. They don't have every comic book in existence. Right. And, and this allowed you to like then start putting this da data into your brain yeah, that, yeah. and was attaching values to it. Too. So values, yeah. Right? Um, Maybe subconsciously. Um, you know, notable overshade notes, some you know, first appearances, important right. events, stuff like that. And uh, and even when I you know, was starting to go to conventions, <clears throat> then I would know, you know, is this a good price to pay or whatever. Right. Uh, but yeah, just reading that and putting that, you know, and then I'm like, wow, there's, there's so much out there that I can't get at this local shop. shop. Yeah. And then, you know, eventually we were looking for more comics shops. Um, my mom would take me over to TJ's over in yeah, Milltown. Milltown. There. Yeah. yeah. So now I got a whole new selection of stuff that I could read or right. check out that I didn't know about or I didn't have Cause he was a bigger show. He had a bigger, remember when we talked about small market, medium market, he's a, in a medium market. Uh, maybe even to large market over there in in Middletown, New York. And uh, so he was able, he had a lot more subscribers, so he was able to buy a lot more different books. He could buy a yeah, lot more. He had a lot of back issues. Yeah, he had a lot of access to collections. Mm -hmm. So I would be, you know, checking that out. Uh, and then, you know, when the internet came out. Yeah. And eBay, Early. oh, yeah. God, eBay in 2000. I was like, wow, there's so much on here I could check out that I don't know about. Right. Uh, or, you know, that I knew about from reading the price guide, but had never seen made available to me. Right. So that I'm, you know, scooping up magazines, because you didn't never saw magazine-sized Marvels 
in the shops around here. No, no. Tales of the Zombie, Vampires. <laughs> Any of that black and white stuff? Yeah. I, I still almost have only, I've only seen a few. Owning a shop, I've gotten none in oh, really? seven years. Um, I get a lot of magazine size, but really the black and white horror stuff. Savage Tale. Yeah, there's so many interesting yeah. things that I was like, wow, there's. I've gotten a bunch of the Conan stuff, a bunch of the Conan stuff. Uh, but speaking of that, like all that time you spent reading the um, uh, the price guide and stuff, um, tell us about your contributor for a price guide or, um, right, for underground yeah. comics? Yeah, um, Fogel's Guide. Now, I'm not that familiar with that guide. And, um, tell us a little bit about it. Sure. Does it come out yearly, quarterly? No, it comes out when he's ready. When he's ready, wow. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of comics that don't exist in the Overstreet price guide. Right. Or in yeah. any of these apps that yeah. you find and yeah. stuff. There's like, I yeah. constantly, I'm, I always call you yeah. <laughs> when yeah. I get so, stumped. Uh, you know, very small, small press, hard to find, hard to find any information on. And I get Self them in. Self-published stuff? Yeah. Yeah, I get them in. So um, a lot of them went to multiple printing, so it's very hard to distinguish what printing they are. Right. So, you know, he and I have chatted about it a little bit and I'll send him some information if I find one that's not listed there or I send him my pricing uh, sales data from the year previous and, and that way when he, whenever the next guide comes out, he'll have some updated pricing to work with. Oh, that's great. Yeah, kind yeah. of interesting. It's neat to be part of contributing a little bit. So, so then you, so you were oh, collecting okay. yeah, more so, and more. Yeah, so. And uh, uh, so reading when more, did you reading, reading more. more and more? Yeah. <laughs> uh, what moved you into selling them? So, so you discovered um, eBay. Yeah, I did, and I remember buying Daredevil Volume Two, Number One. Okay. By Kevin Smith. Yeah. Uh, it was '98, I think. The end of '98 came out, and I remember seeing them going for like decent money on eBay. I was like, "Well, I've read it." But yeah, I and wasn't super into it. Let me yeah. let me try this whole selling thing. So I sold that, and uh, it was a disaster, and I didn't know how to ship anything. I was like, yeah, you go, put it in a mailer, it's off that you go. Uh, 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 by a mailer, I just mean like a... Yeah, an an envelope. <laughs> Godspeed, Daredevil number one. Uh, yeah, but the the, the experience of, of making something available was fun. Yeah. The experience of maybe this was going to someone who was in my, in my situation where there's only a couple of comic snaps locally. They don't have everything. It's a lot there. of people in, a, in that situation. Yeah, that yeah. Maybe not even have a comic book shop. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah within any type of you know driving distance. Yeah. Mon so, middle of Montana. So that was I know. That was uh, that was fun. I like to be part of that side of it. And so I took that knowledge and I, I was going to comic conventions and the uh, the local comic shop at my college was Comics on the Green and they had awesome oh yeah, no, uh, yeah. out there what is it uh, Scranton. not Scranton yeah, right there yeah. yeah they had awesome I think it was Dime Bin he's still around oh sure yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. runs a great shop yeah yeah absolutely so he had like Dime Bins and me I think they were Dime but eventually they went to Quarter Bins and I was just digging in there you know initially for new stuff to read read sure yeah and that's when I kind of uh, expanded beyond Marvel sorry Marvel <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah you discover new things and especially for 10 cents or a quarter like what's take the, a shot what's the risk right let yeah. me check this out so you know. probably could trade it back in for a nickel yeah why not so yeah i came across stuff like uh ted mckeever okay sam keith like yeah this is just really more strange stuff sure uh, so as i started to do that now i'm digging in these back issue bins and i'm like oh i think this one might be worth more than a quarter Right. You know, put that up on eBay. And as I, I'm already looking through the bin, right. I'm try to find one or two here that, that'll sell for more. So I would kind do of that. Kind for your habit. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I would do that at, at, uh, at Dave's shop. I would do that at conventions that would come through uh, at the college there. And I, uh, you know, you're only in a zone as to what you know at that point. And right. I, I just kind of knew that, like, last issues were worth money at the time. I remember just, like, at a 50 cent bin pulling out like Exo Man of War. Last issue? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, Bloodshot 51, you know, just, I always got the last two. Right. <clears throat> and auction them off on eBay. Yeah. This, here or there. Nothing, yeah. I'm not doing anything regular. You're concentrating on college? Yeah, you're yeah. Through? There's no, there's no regular like selling here or there, but 
So was it a business degree you were, were you working on business or you were? Yeah, yeah, oh. uh, double major. One was in finance. Okay. And one was in electronic commerce. Oh, very cool. I didn't know they even had a course on that. So I think it was the first year first that year? they offered it, yeah. yeah. So I'm like, oh, selling online is yeah. a, kind of a cool Kind of thing. perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And to me... Um, Especially in it, the early days. Yeah, yeah. It, it, to reach that type of audience is, is an exciting idea. They didn't have the tools they have today. No, but in my mind at the time, I was like, wow, this is all over the world. Yeah. Whereas, you know, just a tiny population of the world was even aware of what eBay was at the time. <laughs> yeah. But to me, it seemed like everybody. Yeah, yeah. sure. So It was a much bigger audience than a, a comic shop on the corner. Yeah, you, you, yeah, you yeah. only have a certain radius there. Yep. And uh, how far you know, can you really go as far as an audience goes without the use of the internet? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So uh, senior year, well, before senior year, uh, my, one of my best friends, Joe, was digging around on eBay and he sent me a link and he said, check this out. And it was an auction. I think it started at probably a buck or something like that for like 30,000 comics. And it was kind of close by. Okay. And I was like, dude, we should buy that. So we like, we talked about it. We set a budget of what we think would be a reasonable price right. to invest in 30,000 unknown comics. Unknown comics, sure. Yeah. I, you know, we got to drive out there. We got to rent a, a, uh, a truck. box truck. Yeah. Pick a lot up. of them I buy, so the truck has cost me more than what I paid. <laughs> yeah. Truck and gas. Yeah, especially these days. Yeah. Um, back then, I don't think it was exorbitantly expensive for us. Right. But I would think we were in for a grand a piece. Wow. 30,000 comics for two grand? Yeah. All, all told. That's truck. Yeah, that's around that market. Yeah. And then whose house in it? it yeah. <laughs> Because there was no, there was no six thousand square foot. No, 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 no. Warehouse so, back then. Uh, my dad was very kind to us and let us store thirty thousand comics in the basement. Awesome. And we worked on it all summer, you know, just like back there, sorting station was just endless, endless sorting. Right. Um, so much work to make sense of it. But it was exciting back then, right? When you like when sure. you would hit a book. I didn't know like, what they were. I didn't. It wasn't like, hey, there's a five hundred dollar comic because we had right. so much to learn. Right, right. But yeah, the, the just seeing all them laid out was was exciting. Was fun. You know, we were collectors, readers at right. the time. He was doing Sandman. You know, trying to pull out. You know, like I said, it funds your hobby. It funds Absolutely, your, your interest. And then you can fill out your like that. You're reading too. It's like if you started something. Like I never. I read Preacher from issue three till it ended. I never got one and two <laughs> until I opened a shop and uh -huh. I finally read one and two um, and it did not disappoint. It was a great series. But like, that's the thing is, is that I would sometimes find 10 at a, at a flea market or a yard sale that would fill in. I didn't buy it all. Even though when mm -hmm. I started at number three, you know, things come along when you're an adult, you're yep. working, you don't get down there, the shop closes, you move on to another, I have to move on to another shop. Yep. By the time you get your stuff in, you're like three months behind or whatever, so. Yeah, I was digging, you know, I was still trying to fill in my storylines, you know, read, yeah. all, read all the X-Men and Spider-Man sure. and Avengers that I, that I didn't have already, so. It was a cool opportunity to, to get a bunch of back issues at a very reasonable price. <laughs> it's unbelievable. But then came the task of all right, what do we do with the rest of, of this right. stuff? So, now, did you start a company? Did you do an no, LLC? No, this is just, just, let's get rid of these, just, just like you're doing a yard sale, eBay. but the yard sale on eBay, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Book by so, book. The deal was, since I knew a little bit more about values right. from you know, reading the price guide, that I would do the work of selling singles or some runs, stuff like that. And, the, and then the bulk would have to be offloaded by him and the other reason was that we didn't want one person selling we didn't want one account doing good books and bulk right because we thought at the time that it gave you the impression that oh the bulk is just gonna be garbage garbage yeah so he's doing bulk on his end i'm doing singles on my end and we're just you know keeping track of spreadsheets of what stuff sold for and just keep so gliding. you were creating database yeah, from the get. I guess, yeah, minimal. Minimal, minimal one, but like yeah. even from the get, you're getting some sales knowledge. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, but actually, the functionality of, of spreadsheets was was pretty important. Then you know we're we're delving into you know formulas and stuff like that right. to to derive. Okay, this sold for this much. What was the selling fee? What was the listing fee? Um, you know, here's my half. Here's his half. That, right. That type of thing. And that way we could forward each other one way or the other, whatever the other one was owed. So, it was so how long did it out. take you to unload thirty thousand? <laughs> well. Not a it, summer. It didn't, no, no, it didn't. Yeah, it didn't get to that point. You know, we both lugged back tons of books. Right. Fortunately, Scranton's only you know fifty minute drive, right. so we we could easily get home on you know holidays or whatever and replenish from the basement. Um, but we never got to that point. After we graduated, he went out. He opened up a, a restaurant, and he just didn't have time. It's, right. It, comics is time consuming. <laughs> Owning any business is time consuming. So Absolutely. For him to be I mean, running. Uh, he was actually running two restaurants at the time. Two restaurants. Wow. He was running one and building a second one. You know, it's just a lot. So yeah. I'm like, you know, if you want me to just buy buy you out so we don't have to, you know, feel like, you know, when you're not selling anything today. So so we did that. I, I bought the, the remainder, which probably was just a lot of dead stock at that point, I guess. <laughs> yeah. um, but, you know, that's it was fine. It, was, right. it still had some stuff to, the, to piece together sets and runs and stuff. I just really, I just really liked it, and I went to work for the family business at the time. But I just kept coming back to like, I'd get off of work, and I would and just go right to go the right comics. to doing comics. Yeah. It's like, this is, it doesn't seem like work, you know. To anyone else, it would seem like work. It's like, right. dude, you just got out of work. Like, what are you doing? Like, yeah. Uh, everybody who's lifted a long box knows <laughs> that uh, <laughs> it's a lot of work, especially when you're moving maybe twenty long boxes in a day. Yeah, yeah. Just going through it, and then you yeah. lift those again the next day to go back through them because you <laughs> you thought you saw something in the third box and you can't remember which one's the third box. Yep. Yeah. So at the time, I would only do auctions. I was right. using Turbo Lister. I would generate a couple thousand listings ready to go, and then I would launch them all on the same day. That way you get the synergy of someone trying to buy multiple sets right. to capitalize on saving on shipping. Shipping. Yeah, sure. so uh, the goal there was for them to bid the price up more of the books because they were going to save on the shipping end of it. Right. Rather than just trying to do an auction every night or whatever, you know, I save all that inf information. Because Tur Turbolister was great for that. You could save so many listings. Yeah. Uh, I think I had 30,000, 40,000 when, when they ended. Wow. <laughs> when they ended, uh, what do they call that? Support on the support on the, the turbo list. Yeah. I was like, come on, guys, so much work in this. But you could you could store that listing, and then a year later, if you had the same books again, the listing's pop still it. there. Yeah, just pop it right on. Yeah, just add it to that way to upload. So yeah. I would do those major launches probably once every three months or so. Just thousands of listings go up. Uh, little did I know, auctions is a terrible format <laughs> to be selling. Because <laughs> you get comics. beat sometimes. You get destroyed. <laughs> But again, I didn't, you know, right. I had no nobody that was like, this is how you do it. There's no, it's just I wanted to do it. Right, right. And I'm just going to figure it out. And I'm going to make so many mistakes on the way. Uh, and hopefully learn from them all. Um, my dad always says in, in, in business, like, if you if you make some, a wrong purchase on a truck, you know, that, that was my that was my college lesson right there. You know, I just paid uh, five hundred dollars. Too much. Lost five hundred dollars, but yeah. that was my education. Is I, like, you know, that's the wrong price for that truck. Whenever I make a bad purchase, it's always about how can I nickel and dime this out to the absolute. Like when I make a purchase and it's a home run, mm -hmm. it's like ah, oh, fifty ten cent book. Get, take you know, yep. like I'm not worried about the chafe. Yep. When I make a bad purchase, every single book has to get its top <laughs> yeah, dollar. Whatever I can back. squeeze out of that book. Sure. If it, you know, if it can go in the dollar bin, it goes in the dollar bin. It's not in the fifty cent <laughs> bin or the quarter bin. Um, so yeah, I, I, I feel you there. That's yeah. definitely a, a lesson learned. But then you really have to try to make all of it back because, yep. man. But sometimes you don't. You sometimes don't, right? You have to make and it on the that next was his point, is that he's just looking at like, you know what, I didn't, I lost, I didn't make any money on it. What I made out of it was the education. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, all you, it's all how you look at things, I guess. So how long was it before you made the leap from uh, night guy? Yeah. So like five years, I was just working there. Uh, with the family business. And, and doing that at night? Not, uh, with, and not building up to 30,000. I had, uh, yeah, well, 
well, I didn't have any listings because it was right. just auctions. So there was right. nothing there to begin with. There right. Was, there was just my name. I it wasn't even a, it wasn't even Cyberspace Comics. But I was like, I, I just I don't want to do this job anymore right. because I'm working yeah, until you know from. 5.30 till like 1 in the morning doing this other thing that I really enjoy. Really love, yeah. And I just, I just didn't want to do it anymore. And I was talking to my girlfriend, fiance at the time. I was like, I think I'm just going to quit and sell comic books. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Which, thankfully, she was very supportive of. She was like, yeah, go do it. Because right. you know, you're going to be psyched about it. So yeah. I'm totally into it. I can imagine that conversation going a zillion other ways, though. A hundred percent. Wait, what? Mine didn't go that well. <laughs> I yeah, it's, uh, I can imagine. Yeah. It seems like like a pipe dream. But I didn't give up my regular gig. Right. So gotcha. which yours yep. is even a bigger step. Like yeah. I, I've got my toe dipped in. Um, I've always bought and sold stuff my whole life. Uh, I've always been a hustler. When I left the military. They said, uh, "Good." My plaque said, uh, "Good luck in all your endeavors. Do, don't sell this plaque." <laughs> Was that worth on eBay? <laughs> I don't know, but uh, <laughs> I gotta dig it out, and we'll uh, we'll see. Maybe shine it up. 